about this? Can money buy you happiness? New research is in, and the findings just might surprise you. That's coming up, plus tips to get the most enjoyment out of the money that you do have. Okay, Americans are managing to put away more money despite the weak economy. That's the great news of all this. The Commerce Department says in June, personal savings climbed to 6.4% after tax income we're talking about. That's the highest savings rate in the last year and the third straight month of growth. So more money means happier people, right? Well, maybe not. A new study finds that wealthy people don't save for positive experiences as well as people with a little less money. Joining us now, financial advisor Karen Lee. So, Karen, boy, this is really kind of confusing. So, the wealthier folks have this money, may not necessarily be really happy, but if you don't have a whole lot of money, you are happier. I don't get it. What's the what's the measurement of happiness well, in the whole money equation? We, what, what the studies have shown mm -hmm. is, is that true happiness is about your experiences in life yeah. and the quality of your relationships. But I'd like to go to a graphic that we prepared that has to do with the savings rates currently and let's talk a little bit more about that. Okay. The savings rate actually dipped to 1% back in 2004. But if you go back several decades, and that's what this slide shows in the 60s, 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. Americans save more like 8, 10, 12 percent. And as you and I have talked about on the show before, we must save 10 percent of yeah, our income. You have income. to save more, especially if, you know, something right. terrible happens. Right. It's now, what, so, six, eight months savings. So what, what's good that's going on right now, and it's a byproduct of the recession, we've had a huge generational shift mm -hmm. from the adults who were raised either by parents who lived in the Depression, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they lived with scarcity and lack, so they save, save, save because they were worried. And it swung all the way to, to currently the last couple decades. There's been a lot of abundance and, and good times. And so people haven't saved as much. Now, they're getting scared again. So the pendulum's uh -huh. swinging back. And we've actually got a little bit more to go. We'd like to get that savings rate up to about 10%. Wow. So how do you do that? What's the best advice on how you need to approach the whole savings idea? How do you get people to save? If they're saving a little bit now, you want to save more. Well, I think one of the, the, the hardest things to talk about is well, how do you, when, when times are good, you don't worry about it. When times are bad, you worry yeah. about it. Yeah. Well, some of the tips that we're going to talk about, I think, will address some of these questions that you've got. Okay. All right. So let's talk about one. You know, saving can really create kind of a sense of security. So that, in part, is where the happiness comes in. Exactly. Security actually is an element of happiness. If you go back to Maslow's theory of basic human needs, safety and security are right down there at the bottom of his pyramid. So now people who save money by nature, mm. they know this. Yeah. They save because it makes them They're feel feeling confident, they got something tall. To, they got something to fall back yeah. on, right? So the question is, and I, I ask the question, how can we get people that aren't used to saving to taste how good it feels that monkey off your shoulder and have some money to fall back on. So how do you do that? Especially when folks say, you know what, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, I want to buy that because it makes me feel good. Right. You say, really well, it's kind of some more simple things. One of the things I happy. wanted to talk about is about when we buy something. We have a moment, all humans have a moment where we feel so excited. Really euphoria. Euphoria, exhilaration, <laughs> kind of intoxicated, right? <laughs> right. It's fleeting. It doesn't last very long. Yeah. And what ha remember, if you have an iPhone, you bought your iPhone, you loved it. <laughs> and then it got old. And then the iPad came out. Mm -hmm. And you had to have an iPad, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. So really, the key here is, is to realize that when you buy stuff, you're getting a fleeting moment of happiness, and it, it will shift away. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we've learned is that if you'll focus on the simple things in life. So take walks in nature, even if you're doing well. Take time to smell the roses. Mm -hmm. D enjoy those simple things. And the studies are showing that people who have more money mm -hmm. actually have a hard time enjoying those simple things. Well, think about it. If you've tasted that $200 bottle of wine, mm -hmm. how good does the $10 one taste? Oh, yeah, you've forget it. Your taste moved, buds are spoiled. If you've moved up to driving <laughs> your Lexus or your Mercedes, do mm -hmm. you really want to go back to a Honda? Yeah. Huh. So, Force yourself to enjoy those simple things. Okay, so if it's not a thing to spend that money on to get right. that kind of exhilaration, right. maybe you can spend on an experience. But yes. now again, we're talking, you know, it's all relative to how much. I mean, you don't want to break the bank. Right. But an experience might, you know, the, take the, you a little further than point, that thing. The point of that tip is, is again, going back to the studies, that experiences actually bring you more happiness. Mm -hmm. So within the level of what you can afford, yeah. if you're going to spend, 
spend on an experience. A like a trip? A trip. Vacations are the best examples because in a vacation, you're going to create memories and experiences that last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. You come home and you can dwell in those. So really then try not to shop on that trip. Then <laughs> you're double true. spending. And isn't that the At temptation least, well, when you go somewhere? Shop on sale, yeah. which will be one of our last tips <laughs> that we talk about. Right. Okay, very good. So then you, you, you want to... I guess try to evaluate what you're purchasing. Um, well, one of our tips is to wait to for uh, make yourself wait yeah. for some of these purchases. And yeah. again, this is all Walk away. Well, this is psychology. It's actually what's called delayed gratification. Okay. Actually, the anticipation of buying something is as good as the mm -hmm. purchase itself. So <laughs> yes, make yourself save up, make yourself wait, delay that time to the ultimate purchase. And if you're booking a vacation, book that trip pretty yeah. far in advance because you get that much more time to yeah. get psyched for I your trip. I must say sometimes I'm guilty of that. Like, you know, walk away. Okay, I don't really need this. Don't really want to buy it. Yeah. But then if you forget about it and you're like, you know what? Didn't really need it. Well, now it. there's another but great then example. there's the, it's hanging and it's just, you know, with you. And you're like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking about that. I gotta have it. Right. Right. Well, we're all, we all suffer from that impulsiveness when it comes to money. <laughs> Big challenges. I like the experience part. All yeah. right. So we've got some questions that are going to be coming We do. Up. We do. People got, want some free advice. They Always. get it from you. No um, saving, spending, all that. And of course, if you have a question, you can still, there's a little bit more time. You can send it um, my way here. Go to my blog at CNN.com slash Frederica or my Facebook page, Frederica Whitfield CNN. We'll get some of these answers from Karen Lee right after this. All right, we we're talking about whether, I guess, buying or money can buy you happiness. Well, we're back now with financial planner Karen Lee, who says, you know, it's the small things in life. And if you are going to spend your money, perhaps you need to, you know, go for the little things. Those were a couple more tips that you had before the right. break. Well, again, if there's something you absolutely need, that's mm -hmm. a different conversation. But if we're talking about the kind of purchasing that a lot of Americans do just to make themselves feel a little better, <laughs> try small things like, I love fresh flowers. Ten, okay. fifteen dollars every couple of weeks. My mm -hmm. husband's thing when he's had a hard day, <laughs> go get a milkshake on the way home. <laughs> that's a nice Doesn't sweet cut. treat. Right. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, so we've got some email questions uh, coming your way. Uh, people who sent some questions via Facebook and even my blog. Uh, let's get started with this from Todd who says, one year ago I was making six figures living in Dallas. Since then I have had to downsize my home, my car, my lifestyle. But I can honestly say that I have never been happier. This is exactly what you're talking about. I'm things loving are not what's bringing the this. gratification. I'm loving hearing this. This is something huh. very good. As bad as this recession is, something very good that people are reevaluating their actual needs. But yes, this speaks right to our point. Something about simplifying your There was life. an article in the New York Times you might have seen last week. A couple mm. actually downsized to a four hundred. Yes, you saw it. I did. No televisions, and they're doing great. And so they're happy. It's a little drastic, but... Yeah, I thought, is there a happy medium? Because I, yeah. I was, I'm that was kind of what crossed my mind when I'm I saw that you. article, too. <laughs> okay, and then Blanche asked this, um, how do you get to discuss money and personal finances with your adult children when the answer is, Mom, don't worry, it isn't like right. happening right now. We'll cross that bridge when the time comes. Uh, I have tried, this is Blanche, I've tried to make them pay attention to the idea of planning ahead. That's hard yeah, because... This is hard. I've got two main things yeah. to say on this. Number one, you, the, the thing you need to impress on your children, your adult children, is financial planning is all about planning for the future and for bad things that could happen. Yeah. Because once they happen... But young people don't see bad things happening. Well, once it happens, it's too late. Yeah. The other thing I would tell Blanche, if she has her own financial advisor, mm -hmm. I'd ask that advisor if they would do some pro bono work and mm -hmm. have at least a consultation consultation with my adult children and I'd send them in and say this is a gift I've gotten for you no yeah. cost I want you to go in and talk to my how much advisor. should you use your own life experience as an example to your adult children to say listen well, I was there you know or do they I think it's kind of turn off for that I think it's ideal as if you've had hard times share those with mm -hmm. them if you've scrimped and saved and are in a good place again if they're adult children at this point I yeah. think that's a fabulous thing huh. to do okay um, this follow-up uh, from Bill he says I recently received a large sum of money I put it into an IRA, rollover account. Uh, what type of safe investment could I enter into now? So I, I'm assuming he must have inherited this because to do yeah. an IRA rollover, typically you've had to earn and deposit the money on your own. But, mm. you know, as I always talk about, how old are you? And with that time horizon, remember, yeah. you can't even tap into that money till yeah. you're 60. If we've got a 20-year time horizon, I'm not sure you want to go so conservative. 